Hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. You are worthy, God, you are worthy. There's nobody like you, Jesus. And we declare the fact that there's no God like our Jehovah. You reign supreme, God. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof, God. Come on, come on and lift him. Thank you, Jesus. We set an atmosphere for you to move freely tonight, God. For you to have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah, come in the room, Jesus. Come in the room, Jesus. We invite you, we welcome you. Take your rightful place on our worship, Jesus. Hallelujah. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, Jesus. We send up worship to you, God. We send up praise. We send up Judah. Have your way in this place, Jesus. We've come to meet with you. We've come to greet you. Hallelujah. We've come with an expectancy in our hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is worthy and we're going to lift him up tonight. And we're going to give him all that we have. This is the last night. Amen. So we're going to give him everything. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if your hands are free, clap them. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? There's no other place I'd rather be. Hallelujah.
Jehovah, there's no God. Help me say, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Can we declare it tonight? There's no God like Jehovah. Say, no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like
Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Cause you are here. You're moving in our midst. So we worship you. We worship you. Cause you are here. You're working in this place. And we worship you. We worship you, cause you are here, you're moving in our midst, hallelujah, and we worship you, we worship you, cause you are here, you're working in this place, and we worship you, we worship you. Come on, help me acknowledge him. You are here, moving in our moving midst. Moving in our midst. And we worship I you. worship you. We worship. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Working in this working place. Working in this place. And we worship I worship you. We worship I you. I worship you. One more time. You Miracle work, promise, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That's who you are, that is who you are. Call it waymaker, waymaker, miracle work, promise, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. Call it waymaker, waymaker, miracle work. That is who you are Say you are here You are here You're moving in our midst I worship you I worship Come on somebody you. worship him I worship you
cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles Lord there is nothing hallelujah that's impossible and so I'm standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible so we're standing here only because young people for miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because come on say you move you come with your hands That's impossible for that's him. Impossible. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Come on, if you know that you're standing on because of his grace. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because you made. Come on, if you've ever made a way for you, rip their hands in his voice. If he's ever made a way for you, just lift your hands and begin to talk to him. Come on, if he's ever made a way for you, begin to just tell him thank you in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, if he's ever made a way. If you know that he's a way maker, somebody just tell him thank you in this house. And we're standing here only because he made a way. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth and begin to just thank him in this place. Come on, give him the highest praise. Shout hallelujah. Because he made a way. Because he made a way. Come on, when he saw that there was no way, he made a way. When the doctor said it was over, he made a way. When the bank told you no, he made a way. Come on, somebody. When they gave you the denial letter, he made a way. He made a way. When you saw no opening, he made a way. If he's a way maker, just lift your voice one more time and say, Lord, I thank you. 
If he's ever healed your body, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. If he's ever opened the door for you, say, Lord, I thank you. If he's ever provided for you, say, Lord, I thank you. That you made a way, that you made a way, you made a way. We're about to pray. We're about to enter and go to the throne of grace. Let's just bow our head and close our eyes. Father, we thank you tonight. Father, we're standing here because you made a way. We're grateful, Lord God, just to be in our right minds and have the function of our limbs. And for that, we tell you, thank you. Lord God, for some, you've been a deliverer. For some, you've been a way maker. You've been a bridge over troubled waters. For others, you've been everything. And for that, we tell you, thank you. You told Moses, you said, tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. And God, we are standing here because you are who you say you are. You are everything that we need you to be. You're a healer, you're a deliverer, you're a way maker. You are the I am that I am. And for that, we tell you, thank you. We're standing here tonight on the last night of the feast. We're grateful what you, for what you've done thus far. But Father, we are hungry tonight for more. Father, we are thirsty for more. Father, we believe in this house that Lord, you're gonna do something out of the ordinary. We pray for miracles, signs, and wonders to be in this place. You said if we believe in you and the work that you do, that greater work shall we also do. So Father, we pray tonight for those who might be sick in their bodies. We pray that healing, Lord God, will touch them tonight. Those who need deliverance, Father, we pray that you deliver somebody tonight. Father, perform a miracle in this house. And we promise to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father, we commit the service into your hand. Not our will tonight, but let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We commit, Lord God, the praise and worship into your hands. The musicians as they play, let our worship be as a sweet-smelling savor unto you. God, touch the manservant who's preparing himself to deliver a word. We pray for a rhema word tonight. A word that would challenge our spirits. A word that would fill us, Lord God. A word that we can take through us throughout this week. Father, we pray that as he speaks, he shall speak not with the wisdom of words, but in demonstration of the power and your spirit. We pray, Lord God, against every principality and every power, every ruler of darkness, every spiritual wickedness in high places. And Father, we pray that tonight that you lift up a standard against every plan and every plot of the enemy. Devil, you have no power, you have no authority. The blood is against you in this place. Father, we come against every spirit that is not of you. And Father, we pray to you tonight that you would have your way in this house. Father, let somebody speak in an unknown tongue. Father, fill somebody with your Holy Ghost. If there be one in this house that has not gone down in water baptism, let somebody cry out, what must I do to be saved? Have your way in this place, Lord God. Have your way in this house. And Father, we promise to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And every glad heart, put your hands together one more time and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Everyone, let us magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let us lift up the name of God tonight. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't stop worship. Don't stop worship. Hallelujah. Let us give him praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. We lift him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are in conference tonight and we're in the final service. So we're going to give everything we got tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Let us lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 While you remain standing, I'm going to invite Sister Michaela Tuari and she's going to come with the scripture for the night. Praise the Lord, everyone. Tonight's scripture will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. I'll now read in your hearing. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, 
but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This ends the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, praise the Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the house one more night, if you're happy to be in God's service one more time, now is your chance to praise Him. And the songwriter says that every chance I get to praise Him, I will praise Him. I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm glad to be in God's service one more time. He didn't have to make me live. He didn't have to make me live. But I'm glad to be in God's service one more time. I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm glad to be in God's service. like to welcome everyone each and everyone tonight it's our final night 
of our United Conference 2021. Is there anyone excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. Our pastor, I greet you in the name of Jesus and our first lady Smith, our assistant pastor, Elder Richards, and our youth president, Sister Najola Davis. We greet our men's president who I don't see, but we greet him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, don't get tired of me. We're still early in the service and there's still a lot left to do. So, I'd like everyone to prepare their minds for testimony service. Does anyone remember what testimony service is like? Does anyone in here have a testimony? Amen. However, I won't be doing it. So at this time, I'm going to call on Sister June. Please make it easy for her. If you have a testimony, don't be shy tonight. We're here together. We're going to lift up his name together. Amen. At this time, Sister June in here. Bless the Lord. Come on now. You hear him? Make it easy for me. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me with this song. It says, Awake, Zion, awake. Awake and trim your lamp. Awake, Zion, awake. I'm here. Should I do 10 minutes? So let's start from the praise team. I know you've been doing so great a job. So just pick a bud. Hallelujah. We're all going to pick a bud. Come on, jump up and pick a bud. Just a praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Somebody from the musician. You guys been entertaining us the whole weekend. Now let me hear something. Amen, amen. Another one over there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And the prayer shall continue to be my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They're over that side now. Come on, jump up and give God a testimony. Bless the name of Jesus. Come on now. Hallelujah. E. e S, S. U. S. Jesus. Glory be to God. Come on now. Another. Let me hear another one. Hallelujah. God's been so good to you. You have something to say. Mighty God. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Let's hear some more testimony. God has been so good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.
Mm. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Any more testimony? It's been almost two years since you haven't testified. Glory! Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now, sister. Come on now, any more over here? One more song. He brought me out of the mire. He set my feet up on a rock to say. He put a song in my soul. much to give God thanks for. As I hear my sister say, I am a cancer survivor. And let me tell you, I believe God has healed us. And so if I start to testify tonight, the preacher wouldn't preach. God has been good to me. And God has been good to all of us in here tonight. We are in this side right now. You have a testimony? Just get up and do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Too good. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Where would I be? Where would I be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Amen, amen. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any more testimony? Bless the Lord, my Jesus. Yes, sis. Amen. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, glory be to God. to God. Hallelujah. Hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any testimony on that side? Bless Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sis. Bless God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. What a precious friend. And so divine. Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
of our testimony and we're going to ask everyone even if you didn't testify you wanted to testify you i know you have a lot but because the time is short stand with me so we can all sing this song this chorus said better days are coming by better and by. days Trust are me. coming oh. by and by Hallelujah. When, when we reach that city in the
Amen. Amen. Grab your offerings. Grab your offerings in your hand. Amen. We have to go on now. tonight God has been good I was sitting there waiting for my chance to testify but you know what we give God thanks regardless it was so I, I don't have enough words to tell how refreshing it is to hear testimony service I I don't know about anybody else but I genuinely genuinely love testimony service um, I was grown up where every service was testimony service Youth night, testimony. Fasting service, testimony. You always had to come to church prepared to tell of God's goodness. And then if you know who my mother was, tonight was especially nostalgic for me because every testimony service, she had a testimony. 
It was so much to the point where when we drove home, my dad would say, Ivan, you have to tell everybody what you go through. Now, everybody, I hear it every time. And sometimes, and if dad wasn't there, the signal for me and my brother was we would pull the skirt tail. And that would let mom know it's time to wrap it up because your testimony is so long. But I'm realizing as I get older that when you begin to talk about Jesus, you can't stop telling of the goodness of God. It's like a well overflowing. And so tonight, I'm so grateful to hear people, but tonight my testimony simply would be is, I thank God for the pandemic. I really, really, really thank God for the pandemic. Tonight, I can't say I have a reason to complain about it because if there was no pandemic, there would be no prayer line. If there was no pandemic, you know, all the other times we've done testimony service in here, you have to pump and push. Sometimes you have to tell people, come on, let's testify. And tonight, people were popping like popcorn because we long to be in service tonight. So I really thank God. It's sad sometimes that it takes things for you to, to appreciate it. But you know what? The pandemic has made me long for night service. It has made me, oh my Lord, pray my strength tonight, saints. <laughs> I really mean well. <laughs> but anyways... When I get there, I'll fix it. <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, I really thank God for the opportunity to just come together. I, the last time I was in a night service was when Bishop Smith preached at uh, APC, at Pastor Castro's. That was the last time, and I don't even know how long ago that was, but I believe it's been long. I can't remember where that, when that was. But the point is, it's been too long. And so tonight, I just, you know, as I stand here before you, I make a vow to God. I really do that. I don't, I don't want to find myself not appreciating the opportunity to come in his house. I, I want to tell God tonight that if you allow me a chance to come, if, if I'm able to, and if I have the, the you know, the physically, if I'm able to come into your house, I want to take full opportunity because there are people that can't do it tonight. There are people that want to lift their hands and they can't do it. There are people who, who are shut in, saints, who, who long to come to church. And you get the opportunity to be in their place. There is someone who's at home who didn't even have the money to drive to church. And you had it tonight, and you chose to come to church. There are some people who are depressed, who are, have lost their mind, and you had the opportunity, and you took advantage. So tonight I stand in awe of God. And I give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be. And so tonight, we will not take any more chance. But before I put on the preacher, I want to greet Bishop Barrington E. Smith. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Amen. And his lovely wife, Minister Kareen Smith. Amen. And we also, you know what? Elder Richards, do you want to give the, do you want to say anything to the saints tonight? We haven't heard from you all, all week. Just give us a little bud. <laughs> everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad to be in God's service one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. We really thank God for Elder Richards. He's such a faithful assistant pastor. So faithful, so faithful. Amen. If you know he's faithful, just give him a round of applause. Thank God for Elder Weston Richards. Amen. Many of you don't know it, but when we're doing the conference and when we can't find someone to open the doors, Elder Richards gets that call in the early morning. <laughs> and he never ignores. <laughs> he always answers. So I really thank God for your faithfulness. He always has the answers to the questions that we have round, around the clock. So we thank God for him. And we want to thank God for everyone that has been working with the team. We thank God for missionary Sonia Irish and missionary Marvia. I don't see her tonight, but we thank God because when we're in here praising God, they are in the kitchen. When we're in here during the day sessions, they were in the kitchen. So we thank God for them. Can you give them a round of applause, please? Let them know that you appreciate them tonight. Amen. 
And so now that we have established protocol, I, I greet all the ministers, evangelists, all the officers in their rightful place, and I greet all my brothers and sisters. It is a pleasure to see you tonight. But I'm hungry again. I am hungry. I'm hungry for some more food tonight. Are you ready for dinner? Are you ready? It is the last night of the feast. And we're bringing to you someone that everybody knows, everybody's excited about. But for some reason, I told him when I invited him, we can't seem to get enough of you. I told him that for some reason, we just keep coming back for you. So it is my pleasure and an honor, a privilege to bring to you no other than Elder Jermaine Williams. Please receive him with a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, young people, give God a praise. All the young people in the house, give God a praise. Amen, amen. He's worthy to be praised. We exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here with you. Amen. To share in this youth conference. Seems like I was here yesterday. Um, <laughs> I greeted your pastor. He was very, you know, he's, he's like, you're here again? He's a bishop. Uh, <laughs> I want to greet my friend, Bishop Barrington Smith, his beautiful wife. Amen. Greetings, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And to your fine assistant pastor, Pastor Richards. Amen. Praise the Lord. And especially to the the youth committee, the youth organ, uh, department, uh, and Madam President, Najola. Come on, put your hands together for her. It, I had a chance to be youth president, so I understand that the couple of days may seem simple to you, but it's a lot of work behind the scenes. So I want to thank you and the team that works with her. Amen. Praise the Lord. To all the ministers, amen, amen. On the Minister Randy, Minister Brown, Minister uh, Newell, and all you beautiful saints of God, I greet you in Jesus' name. Get your Bibles in hand. It's the last night. I know you're tired. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. To, to, to. <laughs> the musicians in the house praise the lord so so should should i tell them dylan you can tell them okay so <laughs> so yesterday i went to the gym as i normally do in the morning to go and get my workout and play some basketball and ran into dylan and his crew and they were playing basketball and so i decided to play with them I guess I didn't know the preacher could ball, so. <laughs> I won't tell you the score. <laughs> I won't tell you the score. <laughs> I'm gonna say they, they got game, they got game. Joshua can play, you know, he got some game. <laughs> I, I won't give them more, no more details. Speak to the musicians after this. <laughs> Get your Bibles in hand. To the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. I want to go to verse 4 to 6. Genesis chapter 22, 4 to 6. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you found it, say amen. Or if you can see it. Genesis chapter 22, verse 4 to 6, it says, Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood, the burnt offering, and laid it up on Isaac his son and took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both of them together 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to pray. Just bow your heads where you are. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for bringing us into this house in this time as this. I pray, God, that as I come, dear God, and stand in this holy place, speak through me. Speak to your people. Somebody need a word tonight. Somebody need a deliverance tonight. Somebody needs a breakthrough tonight. Bless us now, we pray, as we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Let everybody shout in Jesus' name. My focus tonight will be from verse 5. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. We're going to worship and come again to you. Hallelujah. My theme tonight to you is I'm coming back from this. Come on, I want you to look across at somebody and just tell them I'm coming back from this. Come on, I want you to say it with some meaning. I'm coming back from this. Amen. I don't know what you're going through, but I declare in the atmosphere that I'm coming back from this. Amen. My wife and daughters just walk in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just want to greet her in the name of Jesus. Just stand and wave your hands. Uh, Solalea Williams, thank you. Amen. Amen. Now, since my help is here, we can start. Amen. Praise God. Our, our, our faith does not, when we have faith in God, it does not prevent us from going through life's difficulties. Faith doesn't exempt you from going through hardship. But rather, faith becomes the seed that produce character necessary for survival. When you're going through things, faith produces in you a character that calls you to survive. James put it this way. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it's the trying of your faith that produces patience. But let patient have her good work in you, that he may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. James used the phrase here, the trying of your faith, which implies that a believer faith does not, produ does not produce until it encounters tribulation. Your faith doesn't produce anything until you're tried. It is in the midst of the tribulation that faith produced the fruits of the spirit that is necessary for survival and godly character. You never know what's inside of you until you've been tried. You never know what you possess until you've gone through some tests and some trials. It is after the trial of your faith that you will be perfected wanting nothing after you've been tried that is why some folks go through their difficulties and they fall apart some folks just fall apart and you go through the same trials and you come out perfect wanting nothing because your faith encounters life difficulties it begins to produce love begins to produce joy it begins to produce peace for some of us when we're tested and when we're tried not everybody come out of their trial being bitter and hateful some folks go through it and it teaches you how to forgive how to love how to be patient and if you never gone through things you never know that you have the capacity capacity to forgive somebody that lies on you. you you have the capacity to pray for somebody and want good for them even when they don't like you 
can I preach to some church folks? Uh, it, it's when you have gone through it, it you realize uh, that, that God is using the trial to produce some fruits of the spirit in your life. Uh, you, 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 have, have you ever gone through a crisis and it's after you've gone through it, you realize I had to go through it. Come on, do I have any weakness in here? It, 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 while you're in it, you're crying and you want it to end. But after you've gone through it, you look back over and you said, My God, I had to go through it. Because if I had not gone through it, I would know who was in my circle. Uh, if I didn't go through it, I didn't know some people close to me didn't even like me. Am I talking to anybody in here? If I hadn't gone through it, I didn't know that I lacked patience and kindness. Uh, I have issue forgiving unless you have gone through some things. You don't know what's on the inside of you. Uh, I would postulate then that during the trial of Abraham's faith, when Abraham was being tried with this uh, uh, sacrificing his only son, that was, that's where he demonstrated the fruits of the spirit because he was able to be patient, peaceful, and kind while on his way to commit a horrific act. I want you to think about it. This man is quite casual, talking to his servant, walking like it's a normal day, peace and tranquility, when he's about to commit murder. Now, 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 maybe you don't look at the text like I look at the text, but uh, he would have to be some type of uh, a psychopath that is void of any capacity uh, of empathy or any, 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 any meaning of life for him to just go casually to go commit such an horrific act. He must be a psychopath on one hand or, or he was so confident in the God that he served that the same God that gave him Isaac was the same God that was able to bring him back. Sometimes fate makes it look like you are, you're losing your mind because of how you're handling your trials. Uh, oh God, you should be pulling your hair out. You should be throwing a tantrum, but you're calm in the midst of the storm. And you said, wait a minute, the same God that brought me out in 2020 is the same God that's going to brought me out in 2020. Do I have a witness? The sameness of God builds my faith. Uh, oh, you have to then have experience experience then with God to build this confidence with him that the same God somebody said the same God the same God the same God because he was intended on going to commit a gruesome horrific act and he was calm, he was peaceful, he was gentle, he was just going like a normal day. And uh, 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 so he must have some confidence in the sameness of God. Where does the sameness come from? If we look back, uh, we understand that, that the same Isaac he was asked to give up uh, came from a dead place. Uh, because Sarah's womb was dead. Abraham's body was dead, and yet Isaac came out of it. Mm, God, I feel him in here. So, so, so Abraham knows that if he brought him out of a dead place once, he will bring him out of it again. My God, that's why I enjoy the testimony service because the same God that brought you out of cancer, I got excited that the same God can bring me out of whatever I'm going through. Somebody shout the same God, the same God. Oh, God Almighty, the same God, the same God. Oh, that's why when I'm going through my trials, I can look and wait with expectation that the same God is going to show up for me. So then Abraham, who is a paragon of faith, who was expecting then, expecting God, he was expecting God to show up and to bring his son back even if he was sacrificed. Now the difficulty here then is that we often face with is that we have to expect God even when we don't see God. We got to expect 
God even when we feel God forsaken have you ever been going through something difficult and you feel God forsaken uh, I know some church folks you act like God is always you always know God is there I'm talking to some real folks tonight uh, uh, folks that sometimes you feel God forsaken you're going through you're praying you're fasting and you're not hearing nothing I know the person next to you they hear God talking every day but not me uh, sometimes I wonder where he is and watch this if Jesus on Calvary can feel God forsaken what so you and I there are gonna be times when you go through things and you can't feel him you can't see him you can't hear him but you should be expecting him can I say that again if you don't feel him see him or hear him you should be expecting him because he's coming to deliver you you got to have this faith in him like Abraham had now then this is particular chapter of Genesis is referred to as the binding or as the Hebrew call it the Akeda of Isaac the Akeda of Isaac or the bounding of Isaac in verse 8 it says and they came to a place where God had told him off and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son the difficulty with this text I'm having is that if he is submissive already why is he being bound on the altar if he was submissive in carrying the wood, submissive in laying down, why is he being bound? Some theologians propose that the reason he's being bound is because it's the general practice when you're doing a burnt offering in the ancient Jewish culture that the sacrifice be bound to the altar others postulate that uh, this was done because of what uh, would be done to Jesus Christ the antitype at Calvary because Jesus would be bound to the cross as well but I would propose to you that not only was it a reflection of the ultimate lamb Jesus Christ uh, or the price that he would pay but it was a symbol of you and I uh, God knows that we would not always want to stay on the altar when we need to sacrifice things in our lives so God then the same type of that burnt offering is a type of you and I young people because the truth is as human sacrifice as Paul puts it as a living sacrifice one day you are submissive to the altar and another day Day, you don't want to be submissive am I preaching to some real people today one day you want to fast and you want to live holy and another day you feel like you just want to do you are you gonna preach to me young people I'm gonna say by myself one day you want to do whatever God has instructed to you you to do but this is why the altar there has to be a tying the sacrifice stays on the altar on the two conditions the first condition is when the altar when the when the sacrifice is tied to the altar it stays there the other time it stays there is when it's dead Mm. let me go somewhere with this because uh, sometimes God has to tie you in a position you don't want to be in until you die there and stay there because if he doesn't tie me in position I'm gonna lose my gifting and my calling and my ministry so God has to bound me to anointing and righteousness so that I don't get up when I feel like God, I feel him in here. When the thing enticed me and it looks good, uh -huh. can I preach to some brothers in here? When the sister looked fine and you would have done what you want to do, something in your spirit is tying you to righteousness, even though you want to leave. So, so, so my testimony is it's not always me why I stay on the altar, but the power of the Holy Ghost tie me on the altar when I don't want to move. So every now and then my prayer is it's simple tie me to your righteousness, tie me to your holiness, tie 
me to the kingdom of heaven as I'll do some things that will mess up my family mess up the church mess up the calling somebody shout time me holy ghost handles yeah 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 time me to the things I want to get up from until I die where you tie me hey! if I die where you tie me I won't move from where I was tied oh God I feel like preaching in here Holy Ghost tie me so I don't mess up my life and get pregnant at 16 tie me Holy Ghost so I don't mess up my family that you gave to me tie me where you want me to stay somebody say tie me to it Time it to it. Who shy? Time it to it. Time it to it. I'm tired of fake Christian folks make young people act like you ain't got no struggles. If it had not been for the power that's tying me to the altar, oh God, I feel like preaching in here. If it had not been for God, I need some real testimony in here that will say if it had not been for God, I wouldn't be here tonight. Somebody shout, time me, Holy Ghost, time me, Holy Ghost, time me, Holy Ghost. Mm, God, uh, oh God, I feel him here. Excuse me a minute, uh, but I need the power. That's why I gotta keep preaching the Holy Ghost. Uh, you can't keep yourself. Uh, there's something inside of you that God give you called the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and every now and then, uh, it sits on you. Uh, it anoints you. Uh, it revives you, uh, and it keeps you holy. Uh, time me, time me, time me, time me, Abraham. Father Abraham, time me where you want me to die. Time me where you want me to die. Because every now and then I want to get up from this place. Be real, be real. Sometimes you don't want to fast. Sometimes you don't want to pray. But God is tying me to himself. And watch this. So, so, so he had to tie him to the altar for him to submit there. Because he was getting ready now to make the sacrifice. In all, when Abraham instructed his servant, he told his servant, "Listen, I want you to stay. I want you to stay here while I go yonder, and we're going to go yonder and worship." Oftentimes, when we consider worship in the Western context, it's contradictory to the ancient Hebrew practices. Uh -huh. When we talk about worship in our context, we're talking about something totally different from what Abraham would con conceived oftentimes the Hebrew concept of worship in Abraham and Isaac ideology of worship rather it constitutes two imperatives when he talks about worship there has to be an altar and there has to be a sacrifice you can have worship outside of sacrifice and an altar in the Hebrew tradition, the altar was from, uh, was in the Hebrew, it's Mesbeah, a place of slaughter or killing. It is typically made of earth or on rock wood. It was a sacred place where divinity meets humanity. Can I say that? The, the, the altar of God is a place where divinity meets humanity. In the physical, the altar was not a pleasant place because it was bloody and messy uh -huh. if you go there because the animal intestines will be cut out and extricated from the body and burnt on the altar so there's a smell of burning flesh there was mud there was water there was blood it was a messy place in the physical but this is a contradiction at the altar because on one hand it's bloody and it's messy but on the other hand it's a beautiful place because that's where humanity reached divinity. Uh, on one hand,
and it's messy but on the other hand it's beautiful because that's the only way I can connect with God when something dies in my life the problem with the modern day worshipers is that we want to worship God and not give up the world Oh God, I don't know if this is too much for Sunday night. We, we, we want to hold on to everything else and not give up nothing for worship. But when you talk about worship, there got to be a sacrifice of something. You got to be willing to give up something if you're truly worshiping God. You can't have all the girls in the world and still say, I want God no no you gotta give up something for the god you love so on one hand my god it's painful to give up what i love but on the other hand i'm willing to give up everything if i gotta have jesus in my life this is a contradiction it's a contradiction at the altar because on one side it caused me pain when i'm suffering to give up what i love but on the other side it gives me joy and peace because I have God anytime you give up something for God he always bless you in abundance it hurts because I had to sacrifice the relationship for the God I need it hurts on one hand but on the other hand I gotta sacrifice the woman for the God I want I gotta sacrifice a man for the God I want I gotta sacrifice a job for the God I want that's why not everybody can sing me into worship if you haven't given up nothing for God don't come up here and lead praise and worship because praise and worship is about sacrificing for God what have you given up lately for the power of God oh god i feel him in here you gotta be willing anybody knows that's why you know when you've given up stuff for god people that give up stuff for god worship god differently they don't worship god like the ordinary folks up in here because some of them they look back and said listen i could have been a drug dealer living in a five bedroom house with the car i want but i gave it up because i love god so when they come up in here and they drive their little car don't judge them because i sacrifice for this anybody gave up anything to be in church tonight just lift up your hands and give god a praise and say i thank god i gave up some things i gave up the club i gave up alcohol i gave up marijuana anybody gave up anything for the god i love oh god i feel him up in here somebody give him a praise they see you lonely now but you could have gotten any man in the world but you chose god over everything else open up your mouth and praise god because i gave up something for this Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. I gave up too much for this. That's why, because I sacrificed so much for God. You can talk about my act, I'm not going to leave. Talk about my clothes, I'm not going to leave. Because I'm not coming here for you, I'm coming for God. Oh God, it missed five of you in here. Oh God, some of you are too frail. They call your name, you're ready to leave. You're ready to run away. The devil is a liar. I gave up too much. Oh God, can I get 10 people in here that gave up too much for God? Just lift your hands and say, For God I live and for God. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down sit down sit down i feel something shaking in the house i don't know what it is i don't know where it is oh god but i feel him in here give up so much for him i gave up a lot in college they're going to clubs they're going to this i stayed in my room prayed and seek after god I gave up too much for this. Oh God, I, I feel him, I feel him, I feel him, I feel him. Let me not, let me, 
let me just go on let me just go on I gave up too much the fake worship ain't gonna work you, 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 you have a talent and a gifting but you gotta sacrifice something people in the church knows you're singing with just lips and talent because they can't feel your anointing because you're holding on to too much and not giving up nothing for this oh god i'm gonna move i'm gonna move on i'm gonna i'm gonna move on i'm gonna i'm gonna move on i gotta move on i gotta so 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 he says sacrifice when when you if you call abraham if you call abraham and you said abraham i want you to come to church with me i'm going to worship and you call isaac and he said isaac listen i wanted to meet me i'm going down to cardiff avenue we're going to church the first thing abraham would say to you is where is the sacrifice he's not going to go to worship with you if you ain't got a sacrifice where is the sacrifice the problem with our churches is we're having a lot of church but no sacrifice let me let me go on Mount, Mount, Mount Mariah then is an interesting place because this was a place this was a place where Abraham was going up with Isaac on one side of the mountain with the greatest challenge of his life Abraham had to deal with the sacrificial slaying of his only son and the concern because he was going up to without a sacrifice because Isaac was the sacrifice so on one side of Mount Moriah he's going up uh, and he's dealing with his mind and in his spirit uh, the difficult task of giving up something he loved uh, because Isaac was the son he loved uh, and he had a difficult task while going up on this side of the mountain uh, Abraham had to deal with that psychological pain uh, the difficulty of giving up something he loved uh, but watch this uh, but while he was going up on one side uh, dealing with the difficulty of the pain uh, God was going up on the other side uh, with a lamb so while he was on this side worrying how am I gonna get deal with giving my son up into death and getting him back Jesus the provider God he was on the other side with a lamb oh God some of you ain't see this yet watch this on one side it looks like you're about to lose everything but on the other side he the provider is coming up on the other side of the mountain with everything everything you need oh God Almighty I feel I'm preaching in here oh God Almighty it looks like the marriage is falling apart on this side but on the other side everything you need to have the best marriage you have ever had is on the other side of this can I just preach to 10 people in here and tell you that it's on the other side and no weeping is over here you're sad about the sacrifice but joy is on the other side of this look at your neighbor and say neighbor there is joy on the other side of this you might be crying now but there's joy on the other side of this so while he's going up on this side on the other side there was a there was a lamb being carried by God and he brought the lamb and he brought the lamb before Isaac got there he brought the lamb put it in a ticket and waited for Isaac and, and Abraham to come uh, he went before them because he's a provider he didn't wait till they got there but he went ahead of them and provided everything they need before they got there uh, time is going let me just close this thing so watch this as he was going there to, to sacrifice he was going there to sacrifice his only son and it wasn't any ordinary debt because watch this the, the contextually they use the phrase the knife in the text which in the Hebrew is a Mahalaf. Mahalaf implies that it was not an ordinary knife, but it was a butcher knife. In other words, what it is, the text is suggesting is that it was a knife designed for slaughter and dismemberment. 
he was going to cut not only kill his son he was going to dismember his son and he was going to dismember his son in a gruesome slaughtering on the altar so watch this so that means then if you consider the text then it seemed like a paradox when abraham told the young man that listen i want you and the you you to stay here the servants to stay here while i and the lad go yonder and worship and watch this will come again we will come again the bible states it this way and abraham said unto his young men abide here with the ass and i and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you it is paradoxical because abraham knew that sacrifice and worship meant he was gonna kill his son dismember his son and then they were gonna come back to the servants Oh God, I, I want you to get this. I want to get this. It, it, it's, it's powerful because he's expecting to come back from a gruesome, horrific death of his son. And, and not only him coming back, but he expected Isaac to come back as well. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you going through in your life? Because if Abraham believed that he was going to cut his son apart, dismember his son, and then watch God bring him back from that place and come back again to the servant, what are you going through that God can't bring you back? back from it oh god i feel i'm preaching it here somebody look at your neighbor and said i'm coming back from it it looks real bad but i got news for you that you're coming back from whatever you're going through the lord sent me to declare in this house that i'm coming back from this you might be in a dead place dismembered hands over there feet over there but I got news for you that the Holy Ghost wants you to know that you're coming back from this they laughed at you they walk over you but the Lord sent me to remind you that you are coming back you're coming back from the abuse you're coming back from the divorce you're coming back from the pain you're coming back from the molestation you're coming back from whatever they put you through somebody give him a praise jump on your feet open up your mouth and say i'm coming say i'm coming back look at your neighbor and say neighbor this is my season to come back from it they wrote you off they said you were no good but the lord the lord the, the lord say i'm coming somebody lift your hands and say i'm coming back i'm coming back i'm coming back from the pit i'm coming back from prison i'm coming from the lie Somebody say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do I have any comeback kid in here? Is any comeback kid in the house? Is anybody in here like Joseph? They lied on you, but you came back. Give God a praise. They wrote you off, but you came back. Give God a shout. They locked you up, but you came out. Give God. Somebody say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I should have been dead in my grave, but I. I wanted to find a neighbor, look them in the face, and say, This is my season for a comeback. You can't stop this, you can't block this, you can't tie. Rakataya, Shato, Rama, Shanda, your time for a comeback. Somebody give him a shout. I'm coming back. 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 Any 
worship it here and it worship it here give God a praise for your season I can't hear you I can't hear you it's my season for a comeback look over your life like Joseph and say I came out of that so I'm coming out of this I came out of that so I'm coming out of somebody testify I came out of abuse so I'm coming out of this I came out of divorce so I'm coming out give God a praise one two three come back praise I come back praise I come Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I if Abraham was expecting Isaac, his hands was chopped off, he was dead, and he expected him to come back. What is it you're going through and you don't have the faith to trust your God that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rise against you? I block it, I condemn it. I lose you. You are blessed in the city. You are. Somebody give him a praise. I need 30 seconds. Just give him a comeback praise. One, two, three. Somebody say this is my comeback praise. One, two, three. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. This is for the comeback. This is for the comeback. And in Jesus, and in Jesus, after three days and three nights, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, Raka Shaka, Raka Ka, Raka Shaka. In Jesus, anybody baptized in Jesus' name, if my daddy came back, if my daddy came back, I'm coming. They can't write you off. They can't stop you. Because if Jesus came back, you're coming back. What's this? What's this? I feel the Holy Ghost in here. If Jesus came back, cancer can't kill you. Diabetes won't kill you. Because Jesus came back. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? I feel him. What's this? Just as Isaac, Bishop, come here, stand beside me. Are you vaccinated? All right, me too. I hope these church folks don't judge us. We're vaccinated. Oh God. So help me here. Don't take me low yet. So hear me now. You have Isaac. He was about to kill him. And when he's about to kill him, Jesus, God had provided a lamb for him. And just before the knife touched the body, the Lord said, Stop and switch the boy with the lamb and because of the switch Isaac is still alive hi -ya 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 -ya. who am I praising to in here God's about to switch it for you look at your neighbor and say switch you can't stop me you can't block switch the devil thirsty for evil but God but God, I gotta go. Somebody says switch. God's gonna switch it up this year. He's gonna switch. I gotta go. I gotta go.
wait a minute, wait a minute. The next time they ask you, how did you make it back? The switch at Calvary. The switch at Calvary. That's how I made it. I should have lost my mind. I should have lost my job. But the Lord. Somebody say switch. Can you switch with the neighbor? One, two, three. Switch. The devil can't stop you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. One more time, switch. This is the season. This is your year. This is your miracle. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. I bind everything that's in your house. Switch it, Lord. you make it the switch how are you delivered the switch how did you get out of God switch where my young people at I'm giving you 30 seconds of praise him just for the switch one two three switch it Lord Switch it, Lord. Switch it in my house. Switch it on my job. It's your season. 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 It's your Gone. We gotta go home. We gotta go home. We gotta go home. We gotta go home. Behave, we, 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 we gotta go. We gotta go. Yes, 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 yes. We gotta go. Hallelujah. Praise him. Come on, praise him. It's your comeback season. Come on, praise him. Like it's your comeback year. Praise him. Like it's your time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's your year for a comeback. Give God a praise for your comeback. No weapon for the gates shall prosper. It's your year for a comeback. It's my year. It's my time. It's my year. It's I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back.
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming back from this. Look at your name as a neighbor. I'm coming back from this. Tell my haters. Tell the devil. I'm coming back. I need it away from me because I'm coming back. Shanda Basa Hallelujah. There's some things that happen to some of us. Some of us gone through some horrific situation. Some of us have gone through abuse. Silent pain and hurt. You didn't tell nobody. And some of you thought when you got baptized, the water would wash it away. But just like Abraham planned to dismember his son, you have been dismembered piece by piece, torn apart by it. Some people have hurt you and move on with their lives, living good lives. And you're stuck with the broken pieces. Happened when you were 10, 12, some things dealing with now 30, 35. But God said, you're coming back from this. If nobody else can put you back together, God can. God's going to put you back together. He wants you to know you're coming back from it. I like when God put your pieces back together. Because when God do it, it's like it's never happened. He's going to put all the pieces back together. In your life, in your relationship, in your family. Your family scattered, you can put it back together. I want to open this altar. I know it's COVID, but I feel led to open this altar tonight. This is your season for a comeback. I wanted to walk to this altar by faith. Come, come. Because I believe the potter wants to put you back together again all the broken pieces all the brokenness all those things that happened in the past Abraham believed God could put back his dead son together bring him back with him and they'll leave together and go back home to Sarah God's going to put the pieces back together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise team, come. We're going to sing. I believe the Holy Ghost is in this place. I wish I could lay hands on everybody in this altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's mending some things. He's putting some pieces back together. Hallelujah. Come, 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 praise him. Come. Hallelujah.
I know you've been trying to fix it yourself for years. You can't fix this. Hey, Shama. You, you can't fix this. The potter, the potter, the potter, the potter, the potter, the potter, the potter's in the house. Who shy? Hallelujah. I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. Somebody pray in your seat. God's mending some things. God's putting some things back together. Come on, 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 come on. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. In the name of Jesus, every broken pieces. You have been broken in many places. But he wants you to know he kept the pieces for a night like this. In the name of Jesus, rest Lord. Yes, 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 yes. The potter, the potter, the potter is putting you back together. All the broken pieces. That's softly singing. The potter. Together again. Yes, 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 yes. He's putting your family back together. He's putting your mind back together. He's putting those relationships back together. He's putting all the broken pieces in your life. He's putting it back together. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sing, sing. By the wayside of life. Hallelujah. Dreams and visions shatter. Hallelujah. You're on the It's your night. It's your night. It's your night. Yes, 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 yes. You don't have to stay. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Rest upon her now. Heal every broken pieces. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, the Potter, the Potter, the Potter, the Potter, the Potter's in the house, the Potter's in the house. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Stop by, stop by, yes, 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 yes. Holy Ghost, Shanta broken pieces every broken pieces in the name of Jesus in Jesus name oh yes 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 I call them I call them back together everything everything yes yes Put you back, put every pieces. Oh, 
put you back together again. The part of wants. Oh, the part of wants to put you back together, together again. again. Oh, oh, the part of wants to put you back together again. Hallelujah. It's the part of wants to put you back together again. The potter wants. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. Hey, the potter wants. To put you back together again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kasha Masa. Together again. We thank you, Lord. Maku She. Sayana Masanda. Shika Masa. He says he's still doing it. He's still doing it. Even now, he's still doing it. The part of wants. To put you back together again. Hallelujah. Have thine own way, Lord. Shikasa. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. And I am the clay mold, mold me, me 
and make make me after thy will while I am waiting yielded and still can we sing that one more time have thy own way Thou art the potter, and I am the grave. Mold me and make me after Thy will. presence Lord if we could just bow our heads right here you are the part of Lord we are the clay we recognize it Jesus that you are the potter you are the potter Lord and we are the clay we stand before you Jesus as empty vessels we thank you for every day every moment with you Jesus we thank you for every speaker oh God we thank you for the word that you've given to them Lord and we have received it but tonight tonight Jesus as we stand in your presence we declare that the ground we are standing on is holy holy ground we acknowledge your presence Lord and we want to be still and God as we stand here we ask Lord Jesus that as we have already made the switch that we will not go back to that place but we will go from higher to higher, Lord, from glory to glory. Lord Jesus, we've come united. We've come united, not divided, but united. We've put aside every distraction. We've put aside malice. We've put aside everything that so easily beset us. And we stand here, Lord Jesus, the youth department, the men's department, the women's department, the ushers, the officers, the young people, the olders, the babe and the suckling, the musicians, our pastor, Lord Jesus, the board, we put it all before you. Tonight, Jesus, we are just sisters and brothers in need of you, Jesus. In need, I am Oshanda, in need of you, Jesus. We can't go on, Lord Jesus, with service as usual. We want something more. We want something more, Jesus. 
We want something more. So from this day forward, Jesus, we thank you for the switch. We thank you for the comeback. We thank you because together we stand tonight. Have thine own way. We give you the glory. Lord, we ask of all thy loving and tender mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let every heart give God praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And we've come to the end of our first and maybe the last United Conference. But we thank God that he did it. God did it tonight. So can we give God a round of applause? Thank God for the United. Kingdom Life, we did it. We did it, Kingdom Life. We did it. We are united. We came back after a pandemic and we're only going higher tonight. If we could just raise our hand tonight. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And as you are leaving, please.